Thanks for tuning in. This podcast is intended solely for the purpose of personal growth and not as a replacement for professional psychological support. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests of this show are not meant to be taken as medical advice. It is very important to seek the help of a qualified medical practitioner when making any shifts to psychiatric medication you may be taking, or if you are experiencing extreme psychological distress. Drummer and the Great Mountain, a podcast where we share effective tips and practices for working with adult ADD, ADHD in a natural, effective way without the use of medications. Each episode, join me, your host, Batman Saram, along with the author of The Drummer and the Great Mountain, Michael Joseph Ferguson. Join Michael and myself in an interactive discussion of sharing our stories as we journey together in transforming what can be the gift of being what we call hunter types. This podcast is intended to be your audio companion to the book written by Michael, who joins me each episode where we both will strive to foster dialogue, give you our personal insights, and share both of our experiences on this similar path that we are all on. Our intention and hope is that along with the book, this podcast gives you an additional perspective as you listen to us delve deeper into each chapter of the book to give you even more tools to go along with what it is that you are reading. Visit us at drummerandthegreatmountain.com to purchase the book and look for more tools, tips, and updates, as well as giving us feedback on this podcast. Join our growing global community of creative types, entrepreneurs, and out-of-the-box thinkers on our shared journey. Welcome to the Drummer in the Great Mountain podcast. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Michael Joseph Ferguson. How you doing? On today's podcast, we're going to be talking about the gifts of a gratitude practice. So this is a topic I've covered before. I talk about it in the book. And I feel like with the Thanksgiving coming up here in the U.S., um, and I know many other cultures also share a similar um, celebration that they have at least once a year. I want to cover what are the benefits of having a regular gratitude practice. And so not just being grateful in general, but actually having a practice of noting and practicing gratitude. And specifically, how does that relate with transforming negative self-talk and really having it be one of the key tools in a hunter type toolkit and how it integrates with some of the other things I talk about on the podcast, such as journaling and planning your day. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the studies that have been uh, carried out on gratitude and how it's been transformative for people. And they've been able to document how it has uh, positively affected people's lives, having some kind of regular gratitude practice. So stay tuned for that. We're going to just do a couple quick announcements and we'll get into it. Uh, happy to announce we'll be doing a book sale uh, starting Monday. Uh, let's see, it'll be uh, November 25th through Sunday, December 1st, 15% off on the book, on the print book. Uh, so if you've been listening to the podcast for a while and you'd like to get a print copy of the book, this could be a good opportunity to pick it up. It could be an opportunity to send it as a Christmas gift, uh, Christmas gift for yourself, someone else in your life. Uh, so, and we're giving it pretty significant discount that, to what's on Amazon. So that's available on the website, drummerinthegreatmountain.com. So check it out there. And um, today we'll be joined by my companion and partner, Questa Lee. And I'm super happy to have her on the podcast. She was on four or five podcasts ago maybe even a little more than that. Um, and we were discussing what we were going to talk about today on the podcast, and she mentioned gratitude, and I was like, that's it, perfect topic, let's do it. Um, so she'll be joining us and talking a little bit about some insights she had from a recent trip she took, and um, just some, it's a topic that we talk about a lot in our relationship, and how do we practice more gratitude. So 
Welcome, Cuesta. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. I'm so grateful to be here uh, on the podcast with Michael today. Um, I hope everyone is having a wonderful autumn leading into winter, depending on where you live uh, in the country or the world. Um, so happy November, and I look forward to this conversation on the podcast today. Yeah, and Cuesta has uh, many of you have interacted with her. If you've um, emailed or co- gotten into coaching or have joined any of our groups, you've definitely interacted with Cuesta before. She's one half of the equation. She keeps everything going. So I'm so happy to have her with us. And we're going to just talk a little bit before we go into the uh, the topic today of gratitude. Um, just want to give a couple reflections on the current groups that have been going on. So we, we've, we're on our second uh, weekly support group session. So we did one from September through October, and now we're doing another one from November to December. And it's been awesome. I, I've just been blown away by just the diverse diversity of people that have joined in, um, what people are bringing to the table, but mostly like seeing the progress that everyone makes when they're together in a group, talking things through on a regular basis. We've done the workshops in the past, but the group's been a different dynamic. It's been definitely much more of an intimate setting and um, yeah very grateful. And do you have any, any other insights on that? Well, it's interesting because the last time I was on the podcast, uh, which I believe was last February, the topic was finding your tribe. And that was when we were first talking about, uh, you know, kind of birthing the idea of doing a weekly support group. And that was really at the heart of it was, you know, the, and that's one of the bits of feedback that we've gotten in the group is just how powerful it is to really find your tribe, be with fellow hunter types that have similar strengths and challenges. And, uh, so it's been really powerful and beautiful to bring so many like-minded people together in our weekly group. Yeah. And it's really cool to see how when we start the group, we always do a, go around the room and, and just, uh, and we're doing this online. It's not physically in a place, but just go using zoom meeting and going through, going around each person and just reading people's comments in the chat of like, oh my gosh, that's exactly me. Oh my gosh, that's it. That's exactly what I'm going through. And just that piece alone, just recognizing you're not alone in all of the challenges that you you face, as well as all the strengths that you have as well, has been um, it's just been so cool to watch that. Just it's just very creating healing and uplifting to know that we're we're not alone, even though oftentimes in this society we feel like we are. Yeah. And that people get us. There's other people in the world that understand the challenges and they get like, oh, yes, <laughs> I go through that constantly. Um, and just I'd say that alone's like so much of it. And then we go through and talk about um, just all of the support pieces that we discuss on the podcast and how to integrate those into your life. So um, anyway, I just want to express my gratitude to everyone. We may have I know a few of you reached out. We may have one or two slots for December that may open up. Don't know. Um, it's pretty full. Uh, one or two people may be going on vacation. Uh, so if you are interested, um, we can put you on the wait list and reach out and let you know if there's a spot available. So you can email me at info at drummer in the great mountain.com. Otherwise, uh, early next year, we will definitely be offering our other Um, current offering, which is our Alive Online Workshop, um, which really goes over uh, kind of the essentials, the basics. It's much more informational um, than the weekly support group. And uh, we go over um, life visioning, time management, creating a wellness plan and uh really creating a support system so that was our first online offering which we do usually do about twice a year so um we will be announcing uh the dates for that coming up soon okay on to today's topic which is the gifts of a gratitude practice especially for us hunter types because we tend to get into a rut of self-judgment or of all thinking of all the things that we need to change in our life and gratitude brings us back to the present moment 
And I've seen both for myself and for many of the people I coach, when you start doing a gratitude practice, it really makes a difference. It's not just sort of this touchy feely woo woo thing. It's something that's very practical that can really be transformative. So in the United States, Thanksgiving is uh, coming up this week. And in um, most uh, cultures throughout the world, there is some kind of day of gratitude that's pretty common throughout the world. There's many, many practices. In indigenous cultures, it's really a part of almost every single ritual that they do is an opening of some kind of expression of gratitude. And before we uh, we started recording today, I was talking to Questa and she was mentioning the harvest festivals. Yeah, many um, cultures around the world throughout history um, have celebrated some kind of gratitude ritual um, in the autumn during the harvest where um, they celebrate their abundance, their harvest, all of their blessings. Um, and that is kind of at the root of our Thanksgiving celebration here in the U.S. And um, I know many of you have different versions around the world. Um, but over the years, um, I think some of that has become lost um, because people are so consumed with making these huge meals and then rushing out at 4 a.m. the next day to go shopping. And it's easy to kind of lose sight of what it's all about, which is really gratitude and celebrating um, the abundance, the harvest, and um, whatever that is in your life, celebrating being with your family or whatever it is that um, you're celebrating. Yeah, and I think this is, um, as we've talked about on the podcast before, we have to recognize that it's easy to judge ourselves uh, and our tendencies against a culture that is not really healthy. I mean, you can just look at the depression statistics and all that. We don't have a cohesive, strong culture in modern society. It is There's a lot of dysfunction. And so to recognize that, to not like, to, if, you're, if you're having a heart, you're feeling overwhelmed, especially during the holidays, because you got to buy these gifts and you got to do all these things. It's really like, this has only been going on for the last 50 to 70 years in modern history. Older cultures have definitely had more, things have slowed, they slow things down towards this time of year. There's much more meaning and connection and because our modern life is so fast paced, we, we constantly judge ourselves for not being up to speed with everyone else. And yet we're all stressed out because of it. So I think going into today's topic, it's important to recognize that this is um, gratitude's a way of getting yourself back to the present moment, back to what you have and in get you, getting yourself out of that state of suffering or a comparison that so many of us go through. So the challenge for hunter types is that we spin on these thoughts of we're not good enough. There's something better just out of reach. What do I need to fix? Um, whereas our strength comes from being fully in the moment. I mean, if you think about this, just the whole hunter farmer theory and going on the hunt, you had to be fully in the moment. And having all your 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 senses fully alive and taking in everything around you in that moment, and that's really where our power is. And, and even in Hawaiian, like ancient Hawaiian traditions, they talk about now is the point of power. That's where you have the power to make a change. Whereas if you're thinking in the future, you're constantly you're never in the moment making decisions that are going to really make a difference in your life. So this is where. A gratitude practice comes in. So when we're psychologically speaking, when we're in a state of gratitude, we're not seeking for the next thing. And if you just observe your own thoughts, when you're in the space, space of thinking about the future, thinking about what you don't have, thinking about what you need to do next, which is often where we all, all of us live our lives, we're suffering. There's some level of suffering happening in that moment. And if you can get into a space where you're thinking about, okay, you're stopping for a second, you say, okay, I'm going to list five things I'm grateful for. 
and you start to say, oh, maybe my health and my family. And you really, you don't just list it off the top of your head, but you really tune into it and say, this is what I have right now. It stops that train of thought. It's a very powerful practice to get in the habit of doing. And so in the book, I talk about um, how you can integrate a gratitude practice into your morning practice. And we'll get into that in a few minutes here where we'll actually discuss some practical ways to integrate um, a gratitude practice for, where you're let, you give yourself some parameters. Because I could just say, here, just be more grateful, and that doesn't give us anything to work with. We need, it's helpful to have a very specific practice that you can, you can try out, test, and assess, and say, did that make my life better? And sometimes it's just the little things, Um, you know, sometimes maybe you have a day where you're really not feeling well and you can't find any of the big things, but maybe you just look down and you're like, I have a warm, nourishing meal and a cup of tea, or, you know, it's pouring rain out and I have a roof over my head and a blanket. Um, So sometimes, sometimes it's the big things and sometimes it's just those little things. Yeah. And I think, you know, many of us have had, if you pay attention to the people in your life who, who've made an impact on you that were happy people, I think you'll notice that those people expressed gratitude on a regular basis. I think it's just, it goes hand in hand, happiness and gratitude go hand in hand. I think about my uncle John, who is, uh, I dedicated the book to, and um, he would always tell me, he says, I'm always, the, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I got everything. And he'd always say like, here's the things I got. I got my family. And he was very simple. He had very little, but like on a physical level, as far as possessions, but he would always say that. And man, when he, when he passed away, there were so many people showing up out of the woodwork to, to, to show up and share their stories. I mean, he was a very, there was something very special about him. And the one thing that I can note from my experience with him is he was always expressing gratitude. He was always saying you're, you, he was always grateful for anything you did for him, no matter how small it was. And he would just everything that came out of his mouth was gratitude. I am great. And, you know, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I, I just got that burned in, and it burned into my head. And I know that's part of why I think this practice is familiar to me, because I've seen the benefit. I've watched people in my life benefit um, and also myself, as I've been going through the world, I do my practice in the morning of when I take a shower uh, to connect in, as I talk about taking an ha- existing habit and connecting new habits to it. I'll take When I'm during the shower, I will think about what are the things I'm grateful for, and I'll also think about um, what are my intentions for the day. And a couple quotes here, and Quest has got a, had a really good quote she's going to read too. Uh, one of the ones that I've heard recently that I really enjoyed is um, uh, author Lynn Twist. Um, she wrote a book called The Soul of Money. She's great. Go check her out on, on t- like some of her TED Talks. And her quote, uh, in what she says a lot, is what you appreciate, appreciates. So the more you're gra- grateful for things, the more that tends to come into your life. And I can attest... I definitely have seen that in my own experience. If I'm, especially you can think about money. It's like if you're, if you're in the state of, oh gosh, I don't have this much money or this isn't coming. If you can spin that and, and what I'll notice because I've worked for myself for such a long time, um, it's so important for me to get out of that state of mind because I watch the effects. I will th- start to see things start to dwindle if I stay in that state of mind where I remember when I worked in media a lot and I was looking for like another client, if I was really tense about money and, and I wasn't like, oh, wow, that last project went really well and I'm really grateful for what I have. If I, if I was in that state of constantly worried about the next thing, I watched everything really quiet down. People weren't calling. And, and as soon as I got back to, I, as soon as I would recognize it and go, okay, wait, I'm in a bad space of mind here. I need to shift this. And I'd start thinking about the things I'm grateful for, uh, reaching out to people and just expressing my gratitude towards them. As soon as I started to shift that pattern, magically things started to change. People started calling. And so uh, to me, there's no question in my mind that there's a connection between my thoughts 
our thoughts and what happens in the world around us. If nothing else, then it changes our subconscious and and shows and makes us more aware of opportunities that we would not have seen had we not been in a better state of mind. So I like that that quote from Lynn Twist: "What you appreciate appreciates." Um, and then Ram Dass, who I've mentioned a lot of times, who I'm a, a big fan of, he always says, this moment is enough. That is one of his great quotes. This moment is enough to just settle into that. This moment is enough. That in itself could be a whole meditation for a whole day. So, um, and again, it's gratitude gets us in touch with what we already have and stops the train of always wanting something more. And it liberates us from suffering states of mind. So doing this practice on a regular basis can repattern how you see the world and increase your overall well-being. So Questa, do you have that quote? Yes. Yeah, so this is one of um, this quote comes back to me. It's one of my favorites from over the years. Um, and I was reflecting on it a lot um, on my recent, uh, I just got back from three weeks in Ohio in the snow, which was quite magical for a California girl who's only seen it snow a few times in my life. Um, but it was also a really deep, um, intense trip. I went back to uh, visit and support my aunt who um, is in late stage four uh, lung cancer um, treatment. And uh, so there were a lot of complexities um, with that. And uh, that made me really reflect for a lot of reasons on, you know, just how important it is to uh, be grateful um, on a daily basis, because, um, most of us have so many blessings that, that we take for granted. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I was reflecting a lot on this quote. So this is a quote from Melody Beattie and it says, gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos to order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, and a stranger into a friend. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. So that's one of my favorite uh, gratitude quotes. Um, and another place of inspiration for me is, uh, I'm, some of you have probably seen, because sometimes I repost uh, some of their quotes to the Drummer Facebook page, um, and it's called the Gratefulness Network, and you can find it at gratefulness.org. Um, and they have a lot of really wonderful offerings um, from quotes to uh, like short um, e-courses, like online courses. Um, and it's all about uh, creating a gratefulness practice, which I think for me, even more, I don't want to say more, but even more than Michael is really important for me because uh, I think one of the things that Michael and I bring to the table is we each have our own uh, set of you know, strengths and challenges. And, uh, I definitely, uh, struggle a little bit more with, um, Michael and I call it the dark cloud with a little bit of, a little bit more of, um, the depression and the really critical self judgment and self talk. So it's really easy for me to get really caught up in, um, what I'm not doing right and what I should be, you know, focusing on for goals for the future. Um, and so it's a gratitude practice for me is really important and it's, it's a balancing act. It doesn't mean that I don't have goals, um, or that I don't, you know, look at my life and see where I could do better. Um, 
but it just means that it brings me back to how blessed I am every day for the little and the big things. And um, I think, as I said, that was really strong in my recent trip, spending time with someone who you know, is in their last, um, you know, kind of their last season of life. And, uh, you know, I know, I know this is something that is often talked about, but very seldom is there someone, you know, um, in their last days of life who talks about, I wish I had, you know, worked more. I wish I had done, you know, different, you know, ground plane tasks. Usually people are like, I wish I had, you know, spent more time with the people I love or enjoyed my time in nature more, just been grateful for, for all of the little and the big blessings that they have. That's really it. Because I think if we, if we're thinking about, um, just the, the daily fires that we need to put out, we often, forget to look back and think about what, what will really matter at the end of our life. And I think if we can remember to remind ourselves to say, what really, what do you want to say at the end of your life? When you look back at your life, what would you like to have said that you did? How would you have liked to have lived that life? And, um, and then as you were saying with goals, like it incorporate, making sure that your goals reflect that because, if you are, you set your goals in the moment. You set it. You set a, a set sail towards a specific destination. Often, you don't get exactly to that destination. I mean, most of us don't get ex- almost never get exactly what we want. But it's going to be. It's like like having north as a compass heading. You, the goal is not to get to the North Pole. The, the The goal is to set an intention for the direction you'd like to go in. So I think goals and gratitude go hand in hand, especially if you have not, if you set goals for yourself and you're not um, celebrating the progress, which is really common for hunter types where we think, okay, um, I didn't get as far as I wanted to do on this goal, so I'm just giving it up. That's a real common hunter type tendency. It's all or nothing. It's either I achieved the goal or I didn't, or I, I fell off and so forget it. Why should I bother? It's a real common tendency for us that we need to really keep in check. And so as Questa was saying, having an ability to come back to the present moment, being grateful for what you have, celebrating what you have, celebrating what you've accomplished as well, not as just uh, the people around you, but also celebrating your own wins. How did you show up in the last couple of weeks? Who did you show up for um, to celebrate that, to, re- to be your own cheerleader? Because often the people around us may not have, may not be able to offer that level of support because they're spinning in their own self judgment, frustration, overwhelm. If you have kids in a family, there's often the complexity of that that comes in. And so it starts with you. And then perhaps you can then carry this through to your family as well and practicing a regular gratitude practice. A lot of times when I'm working with um, coaching clients that have families, I encourage them to do like a weekly check in with the family. And instead of just feeling like you have to absorb all of the mundane tasks, see if you can start bringing your kids in, encouraging them, seeing them as adults, respecting them, and seeing if you can give them um, some of the the tools that you you wish you had growing up. And I'd say one of those key tools is gratitude. So you could even have like a weekly meeting with your family and say, we're starting off with everybody, go around the room, name three things you're grateful for. That's one way to like really incorporate this into your personal tribe and also training your your kids who are going into this really crazy world to have this practice as part of their own life so that it's familiar to them so that you know we often go through the world and the world spits us out and and then we have to you know get stronger and clear and if you give your kids good tools then they're more likely to make it through and have especially good inner dialogue. I can't stress enough how important it is to have a, a very positive inner dialogue, which is work. It's not natural for most of us to have a positive inner dialogue. We usually have to force ourselves in the beginning, to, especially doing a gratitude practice, to get ourselves 
into the mindset of this is what I'm grateful for. You could be, you could even catch yourself in the moment as you're spitting out on anger or frustration or overwhelm and just stop yourself and say, okay, what am I really grateful for? And it, this is something I really try to do on a daily basis. I also do this when I do my runs, when I go down the beach and run every day. I will try on my walk back, I'll start to think about what, I'm, what are the things I'm grateful for. Um, and I'm finding more and more so that it's just a natural thing. Now it just kind of comes into my mind versus me having to force myself to do it. So let's talk about some specific actions that you can take. So um, one thing, one simple way to take uh, from this podcast, if you're feeling inspired to do this, um, is for the next three days in the morning or in the evening, write out at least three things that you're grateful for and just bullet them out to say, it, it, maybe this is in your planner or your notes pages or your journal. Here's three things I'm grateful for or 10 things. I mean, set a goal for yourself. Like I want to say maybe, you know, pick a number so you know when you hit it. So three is three things a day, three days in three days in a row, anyone could do that. So that's the challenge I have for you. In the next three days, write out at least three things you're grateful for each morning. And then if you get inspired and you keep writing, go for it. But that's the, that's the minimum. See if you can hit that. Um, and so let's, t- I just want to talk about how this can be then integrated into a, like a longer term daily practice. So if you've heard me talk about on the podcast, or you especially if you've been in the workshop or the group, you'll know that I'm a very strong proponent of having a morning practice where before the day starts to overwhelm you and all the complexities happen, that you have this time of even 20 minutes where you just carve out alone time where you can do, I would recommend these three things. One is some kind of meditation practice, some kind of mindfulness practice. It could be five minutes, just a short focusing on your breath. A lot of people will like use Insight Timer. That's a great app if you don't uh, if you haven't checked it out. It's got a lot of really good med- guided meditations. So do five minutes of that. Journal. And so in the process of journaling, I would incorporate gratitudes. So again, what are three things that I can, what I'm grateful for today? Start the journaling process with just that. And that could be it. That could be your whole journaling process. What am I grateful for? And especially coming out of meditation, you're going to be a little clearer. You'll probably have a little more insight than had you not done the meditation. So it's helpful to start with the meditation practice. And then write out like what's alive after that, like what's going on. And I want to recommend going back to listening to Podcast 65, Journaling for Clarity. That's why I really spell out. A, uh, and I may even mention in that one uh, a gratitude practice, but check that one out. That's a good one to, um, to reference in terms of having a, a journaling practice for yourself in the morning. And then the third step after that would be some kind of daily planning exercise where you're looking at, um, you're doing kind of a brain dump getting things out of your head, scheduling, prepping for your day. So I think that's a really good way to integrate that into your morning practice. So that would be start with meditation for maybe five minutes, journaling, starting with your gratitudes, then noting what's alive and journaling through anything you need to journal through. Sometimes we got to work through uh, some heavy stuff that's going on and just being able to journal to get it out of our head and to see it on paper and feel it like it's tangible versus these emotions that are very uh, mercurial and we can't put our finger on them. When you journal, you make them specific. And then after that, having a daily planning practice. So that's how I, I would recommend integrating gratitude into your regular practice, which is really what I'm proposing here. I would really highly encourage you to make this a part of your life versus I'll try this for a little bit and then forget about it. The the power of gratitude is so profound in transforming your happiness and well-being that it, it deserves a very high priority in your life. And so it's, as we go into Thanksgiving, if you're in, in the United States or elsewhere, see if you can then also take that this presence into those ceremonies as well so that you're not just eating food. You're not just like, OK, let's just everyone's talking see if you can get quiet as a group and encourage everyone to share three things they're grateful for. It's, it, it will make for a more meaningful Thanksgiving for everyone. Um, so I think that's it. Quest, do you have anything to add just to wrap up on this? 
Well, those were some wonderful tools um, that you shared, Michael. And uh, I just want to let you all know that I will be joining you because I have recommitted to keeping a gratitude journal myself as well. Um, And it's always fun to hear from all of you. So if anyone wants to Uh, post a gratitude or something on our Facebook page. It would be wonderful. It's always so fun to see people from all over the world um, reaching out and connecting. So um, we'd love to just share in that with you, whether it's uh, this week or the coming month. Um, And so wherever you are in the world, if you're in the United States, um, wishing you a really joy-filled and peace-filled Thanksgiving holiday. And uh, for those of you throughout the rest of the world, um, wishing you the same for the upcoming holiday season. Um, I think we do have another uh, podcast planned together um, for next month, um, which will talk a little bit more about this time of year, especially for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere coming towards a uh, winter solstice. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you as well. Mm, thanks so much, Questa. And it really, it's been really wonderful having you on the podcast again. Um, so to wrap up, uh, if you'd like to join us on social media, you can hop over to drummerinthegreatmountain.com and go to the top and you'll see the links for YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, you can find us there, especially if you would like to post a gratitude. Look for the post on Facebook uh, for this podcast and you can just post it right underneath that. If you've been enjoying the podcast and the book, consider writing us a review. Uh, Again, every time I look, there's always new reviews, and I want to thank you all so much for taking the time to do that. It really means a lot. Uh, So you can post a review on Amazon, iTunes, iBooks, your podcast app, wherever you'd like. Um, If you're new to the podcast, uh, I've created a a recent uh, mini course, so it's a free five-day mini course that gets you up to speed on the on all the concepts we discuss on this podcast and in the book. So to get that, you can go to drummerinthegreatmountain.com forward slash mini course. Uh, you can also get my latest free ebook, ADHD Time Management, uh, that is available on Kindle, iBooks, and Google Play. That is a rewrite of the time management chapter uh, in the book Drummer in the Great Mountain. Uh, so pick that up. I think you'll enjoy that. Uh, I think we've been number one on free ADHD ebooks since it came out. So that's been great on uh, on Kindle. Um, let's see. So if you have a co- topic you'd like us to cover on the podcast, please drop us an email. Uh, you can send it to info at drummerandthegreatmountain.com. And so until next time, be well. <laughs>